We can learn a lot in this regard by thinking about what a guru experiences. Gurus such as Swami Chinmayananda and my guru gave a great deal of advice and loving attention to their devotees over the years. If a guru became unhappy every time someone didn't take his advice and respond positively, he would have been terribly unhappy. However, as we know, each guru enjoyed enduring happiness no matter how others responded to his advice and attention. Jinmayanandaji advises us in regards to happiness in other people. Don't put the key to your happiness in someone else's pocket. Many individuals spend a great deal of time pursuing the cycle of seeking happiness in outer things be they possessions or people. The cycle starts with desire, fulfillment, pleasure, and moves on to loss, pain, suffering. What is the solution? Some say give up desire. Desire is what is causing the whole problem. It drives us to get what we want, and when the happiness of that getting eventually wears off, we start it all over again with a new desire. So if you can get rid of desire, you solve the whole problem, right? My guru took a deeper look at this notion, unscrambling the problem of desire for us. He taught that desire is life expressing itself. The only way you could get rid of desire would be to get rid of life. Even if the physical body is passed on, even if we don't have a physical body, we are still alive, still active, reaching for happiness and motivated by what? Desire. So trying to get rid of desire is not really a solution to the cycle of desire and fulfillment. Instead, Gurudeva suggested a way to make our desires a decreasing thing. By uplifting our consciousness and changing what we desire. Going to school is a way of lifting up our energy. As a child, first we memorize, bringing the energies up out of the chakras below the muladhara into the muladhara, the first principal chakra. Then in the swadhisthana, the second principal chakra, we reason, we learn how to think. Then we learn how to push things through and accomplish them through the force of will, in the manipura, the third principal chakra. We are pulling the energy up into memory, reason, and willpower in the normal process of schooling. Schooling is important, for it trains us to lift our consciousness, refine our character, and harness the baser desires. Cultural practices such as singing, dancing, and playing a musical instrument are also effective ways of refining desire. They help raise the energies even further than the basic studying in school. In doing so, we raise our consciousness and learn to avoid the grosser states of mind, doubt, depression, discouragement, and circumvent the base problem of desires leading ultimately to sorrow. A cultured person who has raised his or her energies through schooling and cultural pursuits will naturally be inclined to turn within to claim the spiritual happiness that Hinduism proclaims is inside of us, in our inner self, our soul. This happiness has a Sanskrit name, Sahajananda. Sahaja means that which is inherent, innate, or natural. Ananda, as we all know, means bliss, happiness or joy. Thus we could translate Sahajananda 
as our inherent happiness. My guru comments on this idea. Learn to be happy by seeking happiness, not from others, but from the depths of the mind that is happiness itself. Knowing that happiness is already part of our inner nature is useful knowledge. Naturally, then we ask the question, how can we experience that inner happiness? Our religion gives us inner ways and outer ways to accomplish this. The monistic or meditative way is to turn within in meditation, go deep into the lotus of the heart and experience our inner self, our inner light, our spiritual energy. That makes us truly happy. That's a wonderful way. This is the way Paramaguru Yogaswami described in his song in saying that if you practice Siva Dhyana, meditation on Shiva daily, you will enjoy happiness in your inmost soul and the thought that the well-being of others is your own will flood your heart. Of course, to practice meditation and to be successful in meditation are two different things entirely. When many people sit to meditate, they are unable to control their thoughts which wander all over the place and never stop. In the successful practice of meditation, our thoughts do stop and we are able to, to perceive our inner self and the happiness that is always there. To be successful at the meditative approach clearly requires a lot of time and a good teacher. This method is the most advanced. There is also the theistic or devotional way. We can come to the temple and open ourselves to the blessings of the deities. We come in an unhappy state, receive the blessings and go away uplifted and happy. Why? Because we have connected with our inner self through external worship. We have connected with the same blissful state that can be achieved through meditation. Success at this method requires feeling some devotion for the deity and concentrating or paying attention to the ceremony. <clears throat> 